Okay, I thought I'd do a little video on my um, bike conversion. I bought this kit about just over a year ago. It's the BBS02 48 volt 20 amp. It's advertised as a 500 watt one, but obviously it's more than that. Um, it's been a bit of a it's just been a sl sort of a slow build. I've changed bits and pieces over on this bike as I've gone along. Uh, it originally started out as a sort of an, one of these hybrid bikes that I bought from Decathlon. It's an aluminium frame. I think the frame is the only thing left from the original bike. Um, <coughs> as you can see, it's a centre mount, centre mounted uh, motor. I must say I certainly recommend this uh, kit to anybody who wants to use Anybody who wants to do a bike conversion, I think it's a brilliant kit. Um, so far, I've done about three and a half thousand kilometres on it. This is the display, as you can see, it says 2,850, but um, I actually had it in miles an hour for a while uh, to get to get around the speed limitation. Um, there's a sort of a speed limitation of 50 kph but if you put a smaller wheel size in um, it then becomes 50 miles per hour so I, I ran it like that for quite a while I've done about three and a half thousand kilometers altogether with it as you can see at the moment I've got it on I've got it back on kph 50 is the maximum and you've got nine levels of power um, most of the time I don't usually go above level 5 and I suppose I use mostly the first three the thing is if you if you bump it right up this is clearly not street legal in Europe because here you've got I think the maximum's 250 watts not 960 and you're not allowed to have one of these uh, which is a throttle you can only have the pedelec um, but having a throttle as well is great. Basically with this kit, um, using the pedelec system, um, so for example on level 9 like it is now, this would give you, um, I'm not sure, it's not 100% of the power. Um, if I were to use the throttle now, it would give me 100% of the power. Uh, but on the pedelec system, it's, it's, it's a little bit less than that. The thing is, uh, the batteries are bloody expensive for these things. Mine's a 13 amp one, um, and if you give it full whack, uh, if you use the throttle a lot on high power, I think the motor can pull out more watts than my battery's ha uh, happy to give. So basically, it's a way you're buggering your battery up um, pretty quickly if you do that. I, I, I mean, I've mucked around on it and and had it up to sort of the maximum speed a few times, but when I first got it whizzing around on it because it'll get up to a, quite a quite a fair rate of knots. Um, with the bike hanging on a frame, i.e. with no load on it, it'll hit sort of 85 kph with the, with the wheel spinning free. But I mean in real world terms, along the flat, on full power pedaling, you can easily get 60, 60 kph out of it. 50, 50 55, 60 kph, it's not, it's not uh, out of the question again depends on what what ring you're using I uh, <coughs> I changed the one on mine I'm not really a speed merchant uh, this is the one that comes with it this is a 48 tooth quite a heavy chunk of metal this but that's one of the great things about these kits um, weight isn't such a big deal really because <laughs> at the end of the day the the motor and the battery add sort of eight kilos to the overall weight so you don't really bother so much about weight. Um, the one I've got on now, which is quite expensive for what it is, is a 38 tooth, um, uh, which is this one here. As you can see it goes, it has to, you needed, I needed one that went with the right adapter, with the right holes and there aren't that many of these on the market to be honest, I think there are a few more available now but they're quite pricey for what they are. 
it's like I said, it's a 38 tooth here, and on the back I've got a a 10 speed um, Saint. I think this one goes on. I'm not sure what the biggest tooth is on this one. I might maybe put that in the comments. As you can see, it's a fairly big, it's a fairly big ratio. I think 11 is the smallest. I can't remember what the what the biggest is, but I might put that in the comments. Great derailleur. Um, this is actually my second. Um, this piece broke on mine. I didn't even know frames had this. This sort of sacrificial piece broke, uh, and the derailleur went into the wheel and got bent. The other one, and I tried to straighten it, and it, and it works, but. I think the tolerance on the 10 speed derail is, is, is quite high and I just couldn't, there's no way of configuring the gears properly so in the end I switched it for a new one which is this one, this one works perfectly and I got a slightly uh, more sort of sturdier piece here as well I also carry a spare of those now, I didn't even know you needed to do that but this happened to me when I was like 25 kilometres from home along this trail and luckily I had enough tools and I could shorten the train the, the chain and get home but a bit of a bummer otherwise. I've got these nice Saint pedals as well, these are really nice, really good and they're really grippy with these sort of screws. Um, on the back we have uh, a classic Brooks leather saddle. I had one of these on my on my first racing bike years and years ago as a kid. Not this, not this model obviously. This one as you can see is like double sprung I think this is a brilliant uh, alternative to having suspension on the frame. And quite quite classy. Um, the great thing about uh, having an e-bike, a powerful e-bike, is you've got plenty of carrying uh, capacity. This is a let me see a Caradis sort of canvas um, bike satchel. This is the latest, one of the latest editions as well. I've changed this because I, I had the bottle sort of fixed to the frame. But uh, if you're going to use all that space up, you may as well put a triangle in and be able to use it for other things as well. So now here I can fit in here um, the battery, which is I'm quite happy with. Um, I recently bought the Cycle Analyst. Um, very recently in fact. In fact I'm still on the first test of it now. Like I say, I should have bought this when I first got the bike but they're quite pricey. Um, I'm testing the... Uh, I reset it yesterday and the great thing about this is... Sorry about, sorry about the video moving around. The great thing about this is that it uh, shows you what your battery is uh, the capacity, the real capacity of your battery. So I reset this yesterday, and I've done 85 kilometres. Um, the voltage is now at 49 volts. Fully charged, this battery comes in at 54.5. It's a 13S um, 5P uh, configuration of the 18650. They're Samsung 2600 uh, amp uh, cells. So it's 13 batteries in series, five sets of that, which gives you 13 amps altogether. Um, and as you can see, I've used 7,781 since yesterday amp hours, and I'm down to 49 volts. So I don't think I'm going to get to 13, but then this, this bike, it is, it is over a year old now. And it has been abused a little bit, and uh, and I've done three thousand five hundred kilometres nearly in it, so not bad really overall. This is a great piece of kit. You can't actually use it, I don't think, to control directly the, beep, the this this particular kit, which is what this does. But I think with some bike kits, you can actually use this to control the motor, the whole thing, the whole shebangs. As you can see, the speed, the maximum speed, I haven't done two hundred eighty-six more uh, kilometres in it. This seems to be a bit dodgy. I think it's the sensor that it uses. It's one of these wheel magnet things. But well, my average speed, as you can see, I'm not a speed freak. 16.7. And this shows, as you can see, that it's the counter's not moving at the moment. This counter only moves when you're actually pedalling, when you're actually cycling. So 
for those 85 kilometres I've taken 5 hours 4 minutes and 13 seconds um, 119 since I put it on, like I said it's a recent, uh, recently acquired great piece of kit um, what else well back to the battery, here, here you can see my battery in here in this triangular thing um, I've also got uh, lots of puncture repair kits. I always seem to get seem to get bloody punctures. I've got uh, changed my tyres recently, and um, I've now got these Hutchinson Toro um, tubeless hard skin uh, sort of tyres, 29 inch. Um, I've got them with inner tubes at the moment, and I've got this sort of blue liquid gunk, which. Uh, supposedly stops punctures <coughs> which is there we go this is what I've got in the tyres and it does actually work quite well put this from Decathlon um, punctures are a real pain in the arse when I put the thing on the other day I went out to the, on the cycle and so I went out to test it and I didn't take Stupidly didn't take any puncture repair kit or any, not even a pump, and I got a puncture like five kilometres from home and had to walk back with the bike, which wasn't a lot of fun. And like I say, with these bikes, uh, weight is not really a problem, so I always take lots of stuff. I've got a pump, I've got loads of puncture repair stuff in here with CO2 cylinders. I can take a spare inner tube as well because. Uh, this is the this is this is quite cool. This is a battery. This is a battery box. Um, it takes four uh, one six eight five zero lithium batteries, which I bought quite cheap on 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 eBay. Uh, they go in this box, and this powers the the light at the front. It's got a battery gauge right there, which is quite useful. And this will give me. Um, it's got three power settings. It's actually very, very bright. Uh, just a second. It's actually quite bright. It's got three power settings. Off. That's the first level, second level, and the third level. And it'll also flash. And it'll power this on maximum for about for nearly three hours with those those batteries, which is quite good. I paid like just over a euro each for them, I think. I think the box the box was about twelve euros, so you can charge you can actually charge it in the box because this has a BMS in it, uh, so you can charge all four together. You can take them out. This screws off, and you can charge them separately. And um, what else? This is the uh, uh, oh, this is the shunt that goes with the cycle analyst thing. As you can see, this is how it's wired in for the battery. A bit of a mess of cables, but it doesn't matter once it's fastened in there. Um, what else? Well, nice big disc brakes. Uh, these are two tens. These disc brakes, Mavic two tens. I think they are. No, not Mavic. Yeah, the brand. That's Mavics are the wheels, aren't they? Um, Avid, they are Avid, yeah. Avid 210s. I didn't realise when I bought these that, because uh, you see, I thought I, I thought uh, there were some, it was, these were only a little bit more expensive than the smaller ones. I thought, oh great, may as well go for the biggest ones possible. What I didn't realise was that uh, not all forks um, have the clearance necessary for bigger discs. And the forks I had on before luckily did, and these do as well. But most forks don't have clearance enough for this this size disc because they sort of slope at a slight angle, the actual fork. So something to look into. I think with the I think most mountain bikes, seem to, people seem to use 180s or 160s rather than 210s. Great stopping power, but a uh, bit of a bummer if you buy them and you can't fit them on your forks, which I didn't realise at the time. Um, these are great. I just uh, recently acquired these uh, air forks because I had some bog standard sun tool ones. They used to vibrate your wrists to bits along some trails. 
These have a lockout on the handlebars, which is good. So you can you can lock the fork, and they make a massive difference on some of the some of the trails, some of the sort of stony trails. Um, important mirror there. Can you look at me, mirror. Let's see who's overtaking you. And that's about it, really. Very very happy with the kit. Like I say, I, bu I bought this bike originally about seven years ago. I'd done about four hundred kilometres on it, I think, altogether. And since I put the electric kit on it, like I said, I've done nearly three and a half thousand. So, anybody who wants to get into cycling, this is a great way to go. Um, and I don't know what else? That's about it, really. Like I say, I mean, this this battery is a year old, and as you can see here, eighty-five kilometres, uh, seven thousand seven hundred and ninety amp hours of the theoretical thirteen that it's got. So supposedly. There should be another five on there. I don't think there will be, but uh, certainly maybe another couple. Um, this depends on how you ride as well. I do do quite a lot of pedalling, as you can see. Four and a half watt hours per kilometre. So, I mean, very often I'm driving along and I'm pulling maybe 18 watts here. Um, that can change radically, especially if you use the accelerator, as you can see. The maximum amps, eight, 18 amps, oh, uh, this was the other day, going flat out down this hill in, in a sort of full power with the throttle on, pedalling, pedal to the metal, and it was pulling 18 amps, but I don't tend to do this very often because I think it's a very good way of buggering your battery up, and to be honest, for me, the great thing about these e-bikes is it means you can go further, um, you can carry more weight, because I tend to go on my own most of the time. So you can carry tools, plenty of tools, food, sometimes take my camera with me. Um, and you've also got, you've always got that little bit in reserve. I mean, today I did about, I've not been on my bike for a while, and I did about 60 kilometers today. Now I did 30 yesterday, so 55 kilometers that I did today. And I was pretty knackered towards the end. And coming back I was just relying on the motor, but I was pedalling but the motor was just pulling me along as well. I was probably pulling the last part, I was probably, the last stretch home I was probably doing, pulling two amps, two, two and a half amps. So obviously I was getting quite a bit of assist there, about 200 watts here. Um, and it's great, you get a bit of a headwind and you just put the motor on. Um, well, you just increase the, the power on here, um, and off you go. Well, it's a bit of a long rambling video, but you can always fast forward. I hope it was useful. Like I say, this is my bike. Thanks for watching.